Okay, this is part two of the UDL instructional video. And so what you want to do now is kind of go, or not kind of go, but I would like you to go, uh, as you're following along with me in this video, to this uh, URL, right? And so you can kind of just type that in uh, and make sure, and I'll even put it on the page, so that way you can link to it quicker. Um, but once you go here, this is the website for UDL and its guidelines. Um, and there's lots going on here, it's very busy. Um, but I just kind of want to walk you through what you probably would use and reference the most. And so as you scroll down here, this framework, and I know I can't get my screen to be incredibly big to see it all, but this is kind of the framework for UDL, right? And so kind of what I talked about in the last video, uh, UDL tries to remove barriers to engagement, to representation, and to action and, action and expression. And so engagement being the way students engage with the content, the way the content is presented to students, that would be representation, and then the way in which students uh, demonstrate their understanding of that content through action and expression. So you're providing, as it says here, multiple means to do these things. And by so doing, you're creating greater access and removing barriers so that students can learn in your classroom. And so the framework is actually designed to go a little bit further than just differentiating and creating access for students. It's actually designed to create more self-directed and independent learners, which is really kind of the bread and butter of education. Um, we want to kind of outphase ourselves. We want students to become independent of us because uh, then that would have meant we've done our job well. So as you can see, um, I'm just to make sure I minimize any sounds. As you can see, uh, there's these tabs over here for access, build, and internalize. So the first thing that we're going to do, which is more maybe teacher-centered, uh, is to create multiple means of engagement, representation, action, and expression so that students can access our curriculum. And then in the second phase, we're going to start to shift that more to students so that students are building upon that and finding other ways in which they themselves can engage and have the content represented to them, or at least understand the content and demonstrate their understanding of the content. So then we get to a point to where then they're internalizing some of these principles with the predominant outcome being that they become these expert learners who are purposeful and motivated so that students can now come to class and have a meta understanding of how they like to engage in the learning. And if the learning is not engaging in ways in which they can change it for themselves to become more purposeful and motivated. That students are resourceful and knowledgeable. They understand different ways in which they like to have the curriculum represented to them or ways in which they like to learn or prefer to learn. And therefore they become resourceful and knowledgeable and again more metacognitive about their learning processes and how the curriculum can best be understood by them. And then finally they become more strategic and goal directed, right? And so they are able to set their own goals um, they become more self-regulated. They are able to understand how to demonstrate their knowledge in order to be successful. And so that's ultimately what the framework is trying to accomplish is to teach students to get there. Now, it's going to take some time for sure, but if, as a UDL teacher using these guidelines, you get them there. The other thing that I want you to be aware of and that you'll get to now play around with with it, this framework, and I only want you to do the access part. Don't get too overwhelmed with all the rest, but really just the access part. So when we're talking about providing options for recruiting interest, you notice that these are hyperlinked. So when you click that, it gives a little explanation of what that means, right? And so this guideline for recruiting interest, it kind of explains that. And then the checkpoints describe specific ways in which you can do that in that access area. So, right, you would optimize individual choice and autonomy. And when you click this, it will give you lots of different ways in which you can do that. Same thing, optimize relevance value, not the authenticity. By doing these principles, you're actually doing the overall concept of recruiting interest. And so when you click, it'll give you options. And so what I would like for you to do then, after you go through at least just this top bar, is to glean some ideas on how you can provide the multiple means for engagement so that you recruit students' interest, therefore providing them access to the curriculum ways in which you can provide options for perception or different ways in which students perceive and receive and process information, and then providing options for ways in which students will demonstrate that they understand the content or the actions that they will take. All of these three points and then following in these methods will allow greater access, which is what we're trying to accomplish. So for your kind of lesson now, the challenge would be go forward and see if you can provide a kind of UDL approach or at least UDL options for various students. Um, so just think about maybe one or two different options and consider the types of students that and the diverse students that might be in your class. Maybe you have an English learner or maybe you have a student with special needs 
or maybe you have a student that needs additional academic or emotional learning support. Um, so think about those students and think about just the varying students. And I would just choose two, two students that have divergent um, characteristics or diverse characteristics. And what would you do to make sure that your lesson meets both of their diverse needs um, and also builds upon their diverse strengths? So that would be what you wanna do for your uh, kind of learning activity to show that you can implement UDL.